In today's episode, we discuss whether you need to count your calories, what you need to know about carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, and ice cream. Welcome to Nutrition Made Simple, episode two. I am your host, Jack Coulson. And before we get started today, I just want to thank everyone for watching episode one, and to the people who left me comments and feedback, that was greatly appreciated, and I valued your input, and I'm looking forward to hearing about what you think from this episode. Now, to start this episode off, we're going to talk about counting calories, and whether I think you should do that or not. And I'm going to start by saying I think everybody... Everybody at some point in their life for a minimum of four to six weeks, maximum of however long you want, should count calories. Why? Because I think it can teach you so much about how food impacts on weight loss and weight gain. And also, when you decide that you want to stop counting calories for whatever reason, or you just, you find it a bit impractical or whatever, you just have a better idea of what's in food and you are better at eyeballing it and understanding how much and how many calories are in certain foods. And I know this because I did it regimentally for at least a year, and I'd say at the moment I still do it about 60 to 70% of the time. The other 30 to 40%, I'm just pretty good now at knowing what's in certain things because I've done it for so long. And it teaches you so much, so much about food that I just don't think you can learn from reading a book or or... Um, doing nutrition any other way like if you're new to fitness I think you should try and learn counting calories as a way of of measuring your food intake for at least six weeks just give it a try because I think it's just going to teach you so much and if you've done it before and you're quite good at it and you you know and you want to relax a little bit and stop doing it you'll find that you're just better at eyeballing and knowing what's in certain foods so in my opinion Everybody should count for at least once in their life for an extended period of time because it just, like I say, it, it, it's just so good at teaching you about food. Now, calories themselves, and actually, you know, let's just go back, go back a second because the question was, um, do I think you should count calories? So, yes, I do, especially if you're new to this game, if you can find somebody to help you do that, which... I am more than happy to help with. If you're unsure about any of that, please comment below and let me know and we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, yes, I do think you should for an extended period of time. If you're really, relatively experienced with it and stuff, obviously you can get a bit more lax, but if you're kind of new to this game and you aren't, you're in a position where you can, like, I think you should. And it's so much easier nowadays in the sense that even when you eat out, a lot of restaurants now publish how many calories are in certain things. Um, and they have it on their websites, and you can scan barcodes into your phone using different app trackers and things, and it's so easy to kind of work it all out now um, that I think you definitely should try it. Now, calories themselves are made up of mac macronutrients, basically make up calories, okay? So carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Those three are the main macronutrients, and then you've also got alcohol too, okay? Carbohydrates and proteins both have four calories per gram. Fat has nine calories per gram. Alcohol has seven calories per gram. Okay? Obviously, carbohydrates are your body's preferred source of energy. Protein is used for recovery, repair, growth, etc. Fat is super important for brain function, hormone regulation, and vitamin absorption, and obviously alcohol is just great for having fun and having a good time, right? So, they're the four macronutrients. Like I said, carbs and protein have four calories per gram, fat nine, alcohol seven. So you may be sat there thinking, okay, well this is going to be easy, I can just eat more carbohydrates and proteins and less fat. To an extent you could, you could, um, but... Everybody's different and some people are going to require different things and that's why it's important to, to sit down and, and calculate all of this which we're going to talk about in a following episode and I'm actually going to write a big piece on because it's just too much to cover for these short videos. But for now, you know, what, what I said about carbohydrates, proteins and fats is, is a good starting point and if you need any help calculating how many calories you need to eat and stuff then let me know in, in, the, in the comments section below and we'll talk about it and we'll, 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 we'll figure out what's best 
for you and your goals, okay? It's, it's a process where, you know, if you've got 50 grams of carbs in a meal, that's 200 calories. If you've then got 20 grams of protein in the meal, that's another 80, gram, 80 calories. And if you've got 10 grams of fat, that's another 90 calories. So if, they, if those were the, the macros or micronutrients of that meal, that would equal 370 calories. Okay, 200 plus 80 plus 90. 370 calories. That's assuming you weren't having an alcoholic drink with it too. And that's as simple as it is. That's how you work out how many calories are in your food. Now, last topic. Ice cream. I want to know what your favorite ice cream is. I, I love ice cream. I always try and make it fit my my macros and my macronutrients and I will always try and fit it in a few times a week because I just I love it so much. And recently I found an, another company here in England based in London called Lictators and they have this crazy good ice cream called C cinnamon donut and it's I I used to love and I still do. I used to think Ben and Jerry's was the best. But this cinnamon donut ice cream has topped any Ben and Jerry's flavor I've ever had. So I want to know in the comment section below what your favorite ice cream is.